Welcome to the Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Su, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about lumbar facet joint syndrome. I'll be posting new videos frequently, so hit the subscribe button to catch them as they come out. Lumbar spine is low back. So here's the low back. As a reminder, in between the bones are discs. The facet joint in the back is the joint that is in between the bones in the back of the spine. So the bone is continuous. It's the L4 bone that goes all the way to the back. Here's the L5 bone going to the back. The facet joint is the joint that's in between the bones. So I'll separate this facet joint here. You'll see that the facet joint's right here. The facet joint in the lumbar spine is like any other joint in the body. There's bone, there's bone, there's cartilage at the end of the bone, just like your knee joint. And there's a soft tissue capsule that encapsulates the bone and there's fluid inside. The lumbar facet joint can be painful either from routine wear and tear or often it's because of uh, an acute injury, somebody working out, uh, going to the gym, maybe even sleeping wrong. Here's a good picture of lumbar facet joint referral patterns where you can see where each of the lumbar facets refer pain to. Sometimes there can be a little bit of radiation kind of into that buttock, but it wouldn't go down into the back of the legs or into the knee or into the calf like sciatica. The facet joint, because there's fluid in them, is covered by a capsule. So here's a good picture of it. So there's a bone, there's a bone, this is a joint capsule, which is soft tissue around, and this stuff is the fluid that's in the joint, and there's also cartilage here, which I actually haven't drawn. The facet joint itself can have pain because the capsule can get torn, and the reason you have pain is because there's something called the medium branch nerve. The medium branch is something that supplies sensation to the capsule. So the medium branch nerve is not one of the main big spinal nerves. It's a branch off of this big nerve that feeds the facet joint and it's a sensory ner nerve to the facet joint. So our first test is, yes, I think you have facet joint pain, but is it really coming from the facet joint? So first we have to do something called a medium branch block. This is not surgery. This is done by an interventional physiatrist, interventional radiologist or a pain management doc. But literally what they do is they take you to a surgery center, take a needle and very carefully target that facet joint capsule. And what they're doing is it's called a median branch block. It's exactly what it sounds like. They take a needle, come in, and they block the median nerve. So they essentially try to take this out of the equation. And what they're blocking it with is with an anesthetic. It's just a numbing agent. That numbing agent usually doesn't last more than three to six hours. It doesn't matter though. It's a diagnosis. It's not a treatment. So the medium branch block blocks the nerve that's going to the joint. Typically, most insurances require you to get two medium branch blocks before you actually treat the source of the pain, which is obviously the nerve and the torn capsule. So a good outcome is 80% reduction in the pain over three to six hours. So you would get two medium branch blocks. They would go in, do a medium branch block. A successful outcome, again, is relief of pain. You would typically do another medium branch block three to six weeks later to verify that it's a source because you really want to make sure that's the source. After that, you can do something more permanent called a radio frequency ablation. A radio frequency ablation is equivalent to what's called a rhizotomy. Those are the same words. So what that means is the same doc takes not a needle, but a radio frequency probe and actually burns the nerve burns the nerve in order to desensitize the facet joint. This is obviously more permanent because you're burning a nerve. Burning a sensory nerve is not a problem um, because it's not a functional nerve, it's just causing sensation. So once they burn the nerve, that's a more permanent solution, again, called an RFA, which is the same as a rhizotomy. It's a peripheral nerve, peripheral nerves grow back. Some patients need repeat rhizotomies or ablations every six months, uh, again, and not a dangerous thing to do. A subset of patients not just have a little tear around the capsule, but they have significant arthritis and these are older patients. So what can happen is in some patients, you can actually see on the MRI that the cartilage here 
at the level of the joint is actually disrupted. And again, you would see this on the MRI because you would see inflammation. When there's a lot of cartilage loss and you want to get the medicine into the joint, you can actually do a steroid injection into the facet joint. So there's something called a facet joint injection. The facet joint injection is not having to do with the capsule, but it's taking a needle and inserting it directly into the joint and putting steroid directly into the joint. I've actually found that that works quite well for patients that are older, have arthritic joints. That obviously is a temporary solution. It's not treating the arthritis. Nothing can really reverse arthritis, which is cartilage loss, but it does take some inflammation off and it stops the cycle of inflammation. And sometimes that's all you need. You can have repeated intra-articular facet injections um, no more than two or three a year because it starts degrading the soft tissue. The diagnosis of facet joint syndrome is uh, rarely made on MRI unless there's a lot of arthritis because you can't really see the facet capsule on MRI. Other non-surgical treatments for facet joint syndrome include physical therapy and strengthening the muscles around the facet joint, so physical therapy can be great. And frankly, uh, chiropractic care particularly with something called active release treatment, ART, can actually be quite useful for facet joint syndrome. Usually facet joint syndrome is self-limiting, typically gets better after six to 12 weeks of injuring the facet joint. Uh, although I do see patients with year after year pain who have to be treated with multiple rhizotomies and it can be a cause of chronic pain. Again, not treated surgically, uh, but there are interventional ways to treat this. Lumbar facet joint syndrome is never treated surgically. Please do not let anybody operate on your back for back pain for lumbar facet joint syndrome. It does not work. Arthritic lumbar facets, again, you can do steroid injections. Facet joint syndrome, where there's a tear in the capsule, um, you can do radiofrequency ablations, rhizotomies. It's really about the tincture of time and lumbar facet joint syndrome takes six to 12 weeks to get better, sometimes longer. It can be a cause of chronic back pain, but again, please do not get surgery for it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something about lumbar facet joint syndrome. Don't forget to click the like button and leave questions or feedback in the comment box below. Feel free to let me know what videos you would like to see in the future.